Welcome back to page 121. Today I'm going to take a look at NPCs in Traveler. Uh, I've been asked by a couple of viewers how I handle NPCs, how I write them up and get them ready for play. And uh, I thought, well, I'll just take a quick look at that in the video and how I do it. And once I started look, really looking at it, I realized there's a couple of different layers of NPCs that I end up using. And I'll explain that as I get into the body of the video. Today we're going to take a look at uh, some of the supplements I use. And these are some of the classic supplements. The 1001 Characters and Citizens of the Imperium. You can use this along with 76 patrons to uh, be NPCs for you. Or, of course, the patrons of the citizens are, are adventure hooks. But I'm going to show you what levels of NPCs I, I work with. Uh, some I care a lot about and write a deep background for. Others I don't really care about at all. And I just call them by some random name. So I'm going to explain what the difference is and how I prep my Traveler campaign so I'm ready for that moment when the NPC is suddenly on screen. So today on page 121, NPCs in Traveler. NPCs in Traveler. NPC, of course, stands for non-player character, in case uh, someone wasn't familiar with the term. And that is a character that is not played by a player. NPCs can be played by player characters. In other words, they can have a Someone who works for them, a pilot on the ship or something, uh, who works directly for them. So the NPC is actually under the direction of the player character. But the overwhelming majority of NPCs are played by the game master. By the way, the various principles I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing set to Traveler. But they work in any uh, role-playing game. Uh, AD&D, Champions, Gamma World. Any of these would pertain to that. I just told it's Traveler because I got a few comments from people asking about it specific for Traveler. So before I open up the 1001 characters and take a look at the Citizens of the Imperium book, I'm going to go to the lowest level of NPC, and that is just the guy. You, you're you in, in a large city in Traveler, and you are suddenly going to take a ground car from point A to point B, and the DM, GM hasn't uh, fleshed out the driver, because why would I? I don't need to. So that's my lowest level of NPC. That is usually just a name and sometimes not even that. And in the uh, fine tradition of Game Masters Everywhere, my default names are usually Bob and Lloyd. Don't know why. Those are the two when I just need a generic name that I throw out real quick. Uh, those are the two that I tend to go to. If I want to feminize it, of course, it's Bobby or Roberta and Lloydette I've used in the past. It's just a goofy thing I have. I've encountered other DMs who do the same thing, other GMs, sorry, who do the same thing. Um, but it, it's just, those are my quick go-to. So, so your cab driver is Bob, and Bob is going to drive you from A to B, and Bob has this one little piece of information. So I'm not going to bother fleshing him out. I'm not. I'm going to jot up a note, and if I've jotted him up in a note, there's an excellent chance that I won't use the name Bob, that I've actually bothered coming up with a name for him. But uh, as I say, my, my quick default, a guy I didn't expect to really need to talk about, I just use one of those generic names. It's not a hard and fast rule with me. It just, it's kind of become a joke at our table. Interestingly, there is a vampire NPC wandering around our campaign in Greyhawk who is named Bob because <laughs> he's one of those. So the idea is there that you don't really need a lot of detail on that individual. He's not going to recur. He's not going to be important to your story. He's just someone there checking you into the hotel. Uh, somebody that you just encounter randomly at the bar or in a restaurant, and he, he doesn't really have a lot of depth for your campaign. So I won't develop him much beyond a name. The next level of NPC will be the NPC that you do interact with a little bit, but maybe not a lot. Maybe there's a uh, customs inspector that you deal with, uh, but I don't, you know, it's not going to be a big deal. There's no contraband on your ship. There's no, he's not looking to, to grind your gears in any way. So it's really, he's not going to be anything other than just an encounter. So I'll go ahead and I will flesh him out. I'll do the universal world profile, or personality profile, rather, the UPP, like this. And I'll jot up his stats, his age, his how many terms, and uh, some of his skills. It won't be comprehensive, but it will be enough that I could run with it. If the players decide to uh, get into a fight with them or something like that, at least I've got it ready. So I, I will have many of these ready for my average uh, traveler game. Um, I At a guess, I would say I... Prepare 
maybe eight to ten of these for an average three-hour game. And I'll have them and I'll, I'll put different names on them. There have been times when I haven't used a guy as this, so I've gone ahead and I've just morphed him into something else. If the players decide that they're not going to deal with anybody in customs, and I've got a customs guy whipped up, but now suddenly I need a an important uh, street contact, I'll just kind of change the guy's name around a little bit on the fly, jot it into my notes, and then that's what that guy will be. That way I have a record for him if he becomes a recurring character, and I can flesh him out later. This book, by the way, is fabulous. I play uh, Mongoose uh, Second Edition. I play out of the 2022 update. But these old books with these lists of numbers fit beautifully. So you can just take them out of here. You'll have to change some of the skills around if you're going to get in depth with the character. But by and large, you can just take these old ones and use them. So if you got these from your old campaign, they're still useful. They're also available through Far Future Enterprises. Uh, Mark Miller's site on a CD-ROM or a thumb drive. Or they're available for download on DriveThruRPG. So these books are really good. I like them a lot. 76 Patrons works the same way. And then another one. This is in the same vein as uh, 76 Patrons, the Citizens of the Imperium, uh, in that you get a little bit more than just a line of stats. You get, first you get a bunch of rules, but you get the line of stats, and then maybe for some of these guys you'll get a story. I'm going to go to page 42, and I'm going to show you a hero and villain. And we have a couple of heroes and villains here, which is, number one, the young farm boy. He's 22 years old. He has no real money. 797655 is his UPP. And he's pilot two. For years, an inexperienced farm boy, this individual has joined the rebellion against the Empire as he seeks out the murder of his father and the true story of what happened. He has a psionic rating of 11 with rudimentary training. So there's a little tongue-in-cheek. They're having a little fun with us. That, of course, is the Luke Skywalker. This page here, we have eight uh, people identified there. This page here gives us all the people we need. So, for instance, number seven, these are the names. This is the answer to who everybody is, I want to say. For number seven, he's a scoundrel. He's Harry Mudd from a couple of episodes of the original Star Trek. Number six, Imperial Leader, is Darth Vader. Uh... So it, this was kind of a neat little Easter egg, what would now be called an Easter egg. Uh, and then we have others from previous answers from uh, 1001 characters. So they used to like doing this. They'd throw in little Easter egg characters for us to uh, just take a look at and get a chuckle. I remember reading uh, Luke Skywalker in there and just laughing out loud when I first did in the uh, early 80s when I read this book. So this is the second layer of... Uh, NPC that I have, though, getting back on topic, and that would be the UPP, or for instance, a doctor is a great one. That would be an NPC that I would flesh out a little more than just a base UPP. I'd put down a few lines maybe about his personality and his background. And then we get to another layer of NPC. For the next level of NPC, pretty much the highest level, uh, we're getting into the NPC that's going to be one of the drivers of your campaign. Maybe they're an employer. Maybe they're uh, the main bad guy. Maybe they're a pilot on the ship that you're, you're in or a pilot who works for you. You need to flesh those guys out pretty well. I chose this one. It's out of JTAS Volume 1. It's a, a research scientist or a researcher named Simone Garibaldi. Uh, Garibaldi, I like that name from Babylon 5. Uh, Mista Garibaldi. Anyway, Simone Garibaldi, we go into her backstory where she's researching Villani poetry and she's found some lost manuscripts and such. She's a really good adventure hook, but she's also very well fleshed out. And I chose the JTAS Volume 1 as the source for this character just because that's something that pretty much everybody has access to if they want it. So this character I will flesh out in a lot of detail. I'll actually do a page or two of notes on this individual because I have to know how they react and I can't always count on my memory while I'm playing because as a GM, you're greatly distracted. You have to decide this, you have to decide that. If somebody's asking you a question, somebody's telling you what they're doing, you have to be ready for that. So for the big villains uh, NPCs or the big anybody NPCs, I do write them up rather comprehensively. So Ms. Garibaldi here is uh, possibly a patron. Uh, she's going to possibly employ the player characters. 
or possibly they'll be employed by someone else to uh, debunk some of her work or anything along those lines. So she, because she is one of the linchpins of the story, I'm going to flesh her out a great deal. So the answer is for NPCs, it's as important as the NPC is to your story. If the NPC isn't terribly important to your story, don't spend a lot of time on them. If they're moderately important, spend a moderate amount of, of time. And if they're a key mover in your story, by all means, flesh them out. You'll, it'll pay dividends later. Also, fleshing them out will give you other ideas for their use as non-player characters. I used to, when I was a, a new GM to Traveler, I used to write out every NPC. I would write out, it, I wouldn't roll it or anything, but I would write out a stat line, a UPP, for every NPC I was going to have. And I came to realize very quickly that I was wasting my time. I don't have to know the strength of the guy who checks you in at the hotel. Who cares? I don't need to know his education level. It doesn't matter. If he becomes important to me later, I can always flesh him out later. Jot down a few notes of what the interaction was with the players. Between games, go ahead and write him up comprehensively. Players will always find a way to make a non-player character you thought was completely unimportant significant in your campaign. They have an amazing way of doing it, and uh, you just go with it. And so I will write that NPC up after the fact. If the cab driver ends up being really important to the game for whatever reason, he becomes a connection, he's got a Streetwise 3 and he's got connections to this and that, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll flesh him out. It, maybe it's a way that I didn't think of going, but the players did. Anything like that. So I'll react afterward, and I'll jot notes during the game, and then I'll react afterward and make the NPC. But I don't waste time writing up every single person they're going to encounter because it's a waste of time. I will use prefab sources a lot. Uh, as I said, the uh, stuff from first, not first edition, but classic Traveler translates beautifully to Mongoose. You have to change a few of the skills around. That's really about it. You can use that guy right now and, and get into a combat with that individual just from that stat line. And then, of course, the more comprehensive one, like Ms. Garibaldi here, uh, you do want to take your time. You do want to write it out. But then that's a major part, part of your plot, so you're going to want to flesh them out. So that's really it. Like I said, everything that uh, I've just said can pertain to any role-playing game, and it's certainly true when I run AD&D. I flesh out some of the more important NPCs, but I'm not going to flesh out every single one. Uh, you just It can end up sucking up a lot of your time between games and not really pay a lot of dividends. So that's it. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, I'd be interested in feedback as to why I'm wrong about this or why you like it or why you do it differently. I'd be very interested in hearing about it. I'm always open to ideas and ways to change. Um, but that's all I've got to say today for page 121. I want to thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.